Good morning, everybody. It is 8.38 right now. Welcome back to Iowa Live. Lou and Michelle here, and we always like to bring the headliner from the Funny Bone in on Friday to get your Friday started off in a very fun fashion. And Brett Terhune is joining us in studio right now. And you're saying to yourself, uh, Brett Terhune, why do I know this guy? Well, if you've been driving to work, listening to the radio, and you have laughed, while going to work first thing in the morning, <laughs> chances are really good it's because of this guy. No matter what station no it is. No matter what station it was, chances <laughs> yeah. are it's because of this guy. Good yeah. to see you, buddy. Good to be here. Tell everybody where they've heard your work. Uh, I've been a writer on the Bob and Tom show for a long time. I was an intern in 2011. Uh, and then they just kept me afterwards. So wow. uh, every night I'm working uh, for jokes uh, the next day. Okay, and how do you uh, prepare for that? You say jokes for the next day because they have a lot of time to mm -hmm. film. Yeah. And they have uh, a staff of writers, mm -hmm. of course. But uh, yours seems to be very timely. Um, yeah. You know, what are you looking at? What are you watching to give you inspiration well, for those jokes? Well, just whatever's going on. You know, a couple weeks ago, months ago, there's always like some kind of uh, story where a truck tips over and there's always something all over the highway. So I, <laughs> I love those where a truck will tip over and I can get a joke out of that. Like or, Hershey's syrup or something yeah. goofy like that or I think pig's feet. Or this week was avocados. Right. I remember that story. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they were uh, rotten by the time they hit the highway. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> Um, That's all the talk, That's right? That's the life yeah. of yeah. an avocado yeah. right there, Or the sure. pizza rat, or the rat that was showering. If you guys remember that video a couple months ago, it was a rat that was looks like it was taking a shower. Yeah. Uh, that kind of stuff where it's just, you know, every day there's something new in the Some news. Some absurdity somewhere. So yeah. are you watching a, a different news channels now or just taking in everything in general? Just everything. You know, there's a couple websites that you go to and you can get uh, count on them having some good stories every night. So, Yeah. It's, it's a lot and of fun. And how long does it take you to sit down and put material down for those guys? As good as I am, 10 minutes. No. Mm. <laughs> uh, it, some nights that's I'm, a lot of yeah. work. It really is. Yeah. Some nights I'm funnier than others. I'll tell my wife, I'm like, I am just not funny tonight. You know? <laughs> and then other times it just, it just so comes. So what do you have so. to get? What do you, I, I, I'm fascinated by this from mm -hmm. those people that are watching. You realize I, I did this for 26-odd uh, mm -hmm. years. But... Um, this is uh, amazing that, that you put things mm -hmm. together for these guys, but you pre prepare that. How many pages of stuff do you send to them every day? It just, uh, you know, it depends. Like I said, some nights I'm funny and some nights, uh, you know, sometimes you the first joke you write is the joke. And then other times you write six jokes, and by the time you get to number six, nobody's going to think of that one. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it all depends on the circumstances and what the story is. Right. But yeah. you said you started as an intern there. Where were you going to school? University of Indianapolis, and I went for radio. So, uh, and then I got out, and I was like, I could get a real job, or I could try to do comedy, and so far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, everything works out That's right. in a positive That's fashion, right. Michelle. So talk about yeah. some of the work that you do in your stand-up mm -hmm. and how that all ties in with the stuff you do for the Bob, you know, kind of just yeah. you as a comic. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff I talk about now recently is the weird shows I've done. I've done a show at a prison before and how could you not talk about that of you course. know and you take the gig because you hear oh Johnny Cash did a prison that's right that went well and but <laughs> then they knew who Johnny Cash was so you show up and nobody knows who you are but they know there's a show because what else are you gonna do in yeah, a prison you no know? place to go yeah, yeah. So, Is that, so what is that does that make for a good audience yeah they were actually surprisingly good it was, you were nervous because we were in the middle of a gym with 300 prisoners on the bleachers uh, at a basketball court and then there was like one guard that I could see. So th that's what I was 300 like. 300 against two. I know. And when it came out they had a walkie talkie. That's all they had. <laughs> it was a very so. captive audience, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, Let for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them had just gotten off uh, work stuff. So they're like in the, you know, the road construction oh, stuff. Some sure. of them had no shirt. And some had eye patches, and it, you're just looking at them. You're like, I hope I'm funny. <laughs> you <laughs> now, know? now, when you're doing a show like that, when do you know that? Yeah, okay, I, I think I have these guys. I here. did. I hit. I had a joke about ghost hunting, uh, which I'm still talking about. Different, different material, but. Uh, I, I did the joke and you could hear you stupid mm -hmm. and that, I, that was a big applause you know so like eventually I got him but at first you're just kind of nervous because you're like you know uh, it's like when you walk into a, a small town gig and everybody knows that you're not from that town right everybody knows that you're not from the prison you know mm -hmm. so it, it was nerve-wracking but eventually I got him all right now how does that compare to when you're going up on stage at a place like when you're in Des Moines for example I'm yeah. sure it feels very similar uh, to Indianapolis <laughs> around here the Des Moines yeah. area so uh, weather wise not a big deal but mm -hmm. when you come into a venue like the Funny Bone in Des Moines what's that like yeah I mean I've been here several times so this club is great mm -hmm. that you know the audience is supportive and the staff 
staff is great. So you come in and just, you have fun. Like last night, uh, I got to talk to the audience uh, quite a bit and you it's interactive and it's fun. And I try to never make fun of anybody. I don't want anybody to feel singled out or, you know, uh, so it's just a lot of fun and you can kind of interact and make, personalize the material. Right. Yeah. How does that work with, okay, so you write, you, you, you know, prolific writer for the Bob and Tom show and all of that material, just some of that material that you write for them make its way into your shows or you're not, do you kind of have to keep them separate? Yeah, sometimes, and sometimes with the stuff, it's not evergreen material, you know, so if I'm talking about something that happened this week, people will know next week that's an old joke, you know, so it depends on uh, if it's more of an evergreen topic, I can slide it in and see if people... Now explain uh, what evergreen means for those people that may yeah, not Yeah, evergreen that. is, Timeless. you okay. know, yeah, something that's just as funny today as it will be in two years and two years ago, you know. Right. So, you know, some that's what I try to write is stuff, you know, about ghost hunting shows because that those shows have been on for a decade. Right. So, um, you know, stuff that's just funny right now and still relevant, you know. Because right. sometimes when you listen to comedy, sometimes comedy does not age well. <laughs> and you listen to a recording, you're like, I can't believe you said that, yeah. you know. Yeah, that, that you can tell how old that joke is. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is a, a place where people can hear some of the things you've done already. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking a little bit before the cameras turned on about the the value of having your material oh, on yeah. serious radio mm -hmm. and, and how much it has helped everything that you are doing. Explain, mm -hmm. uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I've, I've gotten regular play. I, my album went to number one on iTunes. How about uh, that? Yeah, available now. Yeah. Uh, the no. title of the album is? It's called Mr. Turkey because my name is Brent Terhune and when I would substitute teach little kids, they don't they don't know that name, especially uh, they can't say their letter R's, so they would always say Mr. Turkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird like that, it. that where you can't say your letter R's, that's called rhoticism. Of course, which starts with, with an R. With an R, yeah. R yeah, so with an R. what kind of yeah. evil person <laughs> named it that? <laughs> You know. I can't even say what my problem is. I know, Mr. Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it went to number one. Yeah, it went I to do. number one. That is that so was, awesome. I know, it was cool, totally unexpected, you know. And then you look at the charts, it's always five Jim Gaffigan albums <laughs> and then me, you know. <laughs> but so. hey, you're a good company, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but uh, the places people can find you on mm -hmm. Sirius, in case you do have Sirius in your car, which you probably should. Anyway, yeah. So what, what, what places can they find uh, you? Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup. I get regular play on that. And now explain then, Jeff and Larry for those people that aren't. Uh, uh, Je I don't know if you've ever heard of Jeff Fox. Uh, that's a guy they probably have heard of. And then yeah. Larry is uh, and then Larry he's the, a cable he's guy. He's a cable guy. Yeah. yeah. Comedy yeah. occasionally, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Those two have a channel on Sirius. Heard of him before? Yeah. Yeah. So I get regular play on those, and then Laugh USA, and that's kind of a clean comedy channel. So that's having kids in the car kind of comedy and, channel, And that's too. one that we recently discovered that mm -hmm. is really cool, and I'm glad you said that because you did mention clean comedy. Yeah. And, and your material is, is clean material. Yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe I'll go uh, not even blue, but sometimes it goes off the rails a little bit, but nobody's going to be clutching their pearls right. being like, I can't believe you said that. You right. know? So for you're, the most part, I don't... You're very cognizant of that, too. Yeah, and I don't... Because you don't, don't think you need that, do you? Uh, no, but you know, so if you do that, and it's funny, is funny regardless. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I am good enough where I don't need. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you don't. You don't need to. Uh, yeah, I commend you for that. not oh, having thanks. to go there. Yeah. That, that is great that you do that. But don't go too far, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to take care of a little bit of biz, and we're going to come back more with Brent uh, Tihoon or Turkey, as he <laughs> likes to. Turkey. His Mr. little Turkey. kids like to call him. He's at the Funny Bone. He's there tonight, and he's there tomorrow night as well. Go over to West Glen Town Center area and check him out. And we will be right back. This is Iowa Live on CW Iowa 23 in West Des Moines.